our midst, Reverend Dave Campbell. When I was in Bible College in 1985, I led a team of students from the Elim Bible College and went to be with you in St. Albans. We were there for five days and uh, we learned so much. Thank you so much. And now you happen to be my district superintendent yeah. and now my regional superintendent. Oh boy, we're going to have something today. Yeah. Shall I say that? Receive money. Receive. Yeah. You're using your fingers to catch. Yeah. Receive all of it. All of it. Yeah. Receive. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But when it happens, come and share the testimony like uh, Richard did. And uh, somewhere we have a situation with your left shoulder, under your left shoulder. There's some pain there. Who is it? Oh, is the finger that way? It's okay. Never mind. So, you receive your healing now. In the name of Jesus. Daddy, I hand over to you, sir. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. <laughs> it's great. Do you know, you can hardly believe I've known Pastor Sam 33 years, can you? I mean, he looks old enough, but I don't look old enough. <laughs> And it's so good to, to sort of uh, to know someone like Sam who's been faithful to Jesus all that time. And uh, you know, we've both known each other when we've had good times, and we've known each other when we've had bad times. And uh, your pastor's always been faithful. He's a good, faithful servant. And the mum was so far looking after him, he wouldn't dare do anything wrong, would he? And Alfred and Elizabeth, it's a great team here. So I'm really pleased to be here and to join with you. Um, this morning at the first service, I said to them, I've got two sermons. I've got a good, one, a good one and a really good one. Which one did they want? And I'm sorry, they had the really good one. But I'll tell you what, I lied to them because this is the really good one. <laughs> I just thought it would make them feel happier if I told them that. <laughs> Not really. But that's, that's great. And, uh, but if you've got a Bible... I'd like to read from Isaiah chapter 35. I sometimes say to, uh, when I come out of places now, I say, if you're, if you're under 25, you should know the Bible's available in printed form now. You can, you can buy one of these everywhere I go. Young people, they've got their phone out to read the Bible, their, their iPad, and you don't really know if they're reading the Bible. You don't really know if they're doing texts, if there's angry birds or whatever's happening on there. You don't, you don't really, really, really know. But so, because this is, this is good. I also, I have the Bible on my iPad. But when, when, when you're preaching, you don't want to say, the Bible says. It doesn't look good, does it? It doesn't look the same. So, this, this is, the Bible says. Yes. So I carry one of those. Here we go. In Isaiah chapter 35. I'm going to just read that chapter. <clears throat> the wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice, even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the excellence of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the excellency of our God. Strengthen the weak hands, and make firm the feeble knees, and say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For waters shall burst forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. 
the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of jackals, <coughs> where each lay, there shall be grass with reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. <coughs> Whoever walks the, the, the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast go up on it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come with to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Amen. And, and good riddance to sorrow and sighing. Bless the Lord. I want to talk to you about... I think we're living the season, but God is about to do something new and wonderful amongst us. Now, people always say that. I mean, people should always say that. This is about, this will change your life. And I don't say it very often. But I do watch the seasons. And I, I feel there's a change in the seasons that's happening in all the churches. As Pastor said, I look after, um, responsible for 140 of the Elam churches around this, this area. And this is the best one. <laughs> this is the best one. I say that everywhere because uh, everyone seems to be quite happy. It must be true somewhere. I mean, it must be right somewhere. But I say that. But, I say, but when I go around, I, you, you sense <clears throat> people feeling there's, that there's something, God is doing something. It feels like the early 90s again. Because 1994, we had a real move. The Holy Spirit went right around the world, part of what we were touched by. And it feels to me a little bit like just before then. Because it's like it's getting dark. It's like the world's not good. But the church is beginning to take evangelism seriously again. And whenever the church takes evangelism seriously, God turns up. It's almost like, Lord says, if, if you're going to go reach, do outreach, I better make the church worth joining. I make it more fun for people to come into. So I think there's a season, there's something which is beginning to happen. <laughs> And I think one of the signs of, of, of that, of God coming, is this, this scripture is about a desert blossoming. And because um, sometimes you can feel spiritually dry, can't you? And there's two types of dryness. You can spiritually dry because you're backslidden and you're away from God. And I think that's probably the easiest one to sort out. You just repent, sort yourself out, say you're sorry, and get put right. And then there's another thirst that comes, not because God's not there, but because he is there. I'll give you an example. I don't know if um, one of great British traditions is fish and chip shop. And sometimes I go in a fish and chip shop, my wife and I will say, we'll just get a bag of chips. We'll just have between us. It's, it's all we need. There's always a queue in a chip shop. I don't know if they pay people to stand there to make it <laughs> work longer. But she, she never walks in front. There's always a queue. They always try it. And after she comes, I might get, get a bag each. I'm a bit hungry now. And now, but once you start smelling it and seeing it, I'm going to get a bag each, we get a bag, bag, bag each. And, and then he's right again and says, fish is looking good, that looks nice fish. Is that chicken? Oh, that looks good, that's good. But what's up with those dandos? It costs you a fortune. The things. But, but by the time you go up there, you go, two large cod, chips, mushy peas, so a couple of sausages, and you go, back. because you didn't realise you're hungry until you smelt the food. <laughs> you, know, you walk along the road, you smell. Sometimes... The hunger you feel isn't because God isn't with you. It's because he's let you smell his presence. Yeah. And there's something inside of us. We almost become and say, I can sense his presence. That there's a hunger that's coming. And I actually want to make you hungry today. Mm -hmm. So it's not physical hunger because we all got that. This is, this is something that's inside of us, a real hunger. And let me tell you a, a, a story that happened to him. 20 odd years ago to me. I was in, we used to pray every Friday for revival. In fact, I was in a meeting that we prayed every Friday for over 20 years for revival in St. Albans when I was pastoring the church there. And at this February 1994, I was, we were in an Anglican church and there was about 10 of us pastors. And it was a little round room and there were little narrow windows. 
And we had a pastor from America who came, his name was Bob Crane. And he'd just been to Toronto. He'd heard of the Toronto Church. But nobody, we hadn't heard of the Toronto Church. I didn't even know, I knew Toronto was in Canada, but I didn't know whereabouts. And he started talking about how God was moving in this church. And he says, God's moving. He said, people are getting stuck to the floor for hours. And I don't know why. I thought that sounded quite good. I thought, oh, I'd love to be stuck to the floor for hours. I don't know why, but I thought it was amazing. He said, we praying for people, and, and said there was people laughing, but they wouldn't say much about that. I thought, it's great. And I thought, well, in those days, we didn't travel much. We didn't, didn't go anywhere. I said, that's great. And I was looking around the little room. I thought, she should pray for us. We should get him to pray for us. But pastors, they don't like asking. They don't, they don't, they don't. So I says, Bob, um, that's the Bible. You have not if you have not asked. You know that scripture? So I said, Pastor, would, would, you mind, would you pray for us? And he said, yes, I will. And I thought, I asked. Just, Lord, just, just so you notice, they did not ask. When you come to bless, I know the blessing. I should get most because, because they're only getting because I asked. So I'm asking. So I'm asking. So I felt quite good. So he started praying for the person next to him. And I noticed in those days, it, I don't people fall over a lot, but in those days, they didn't really. And he started praying for this person who was sort of rocking like that and thought, it's going to fall over. It's going to fall, fall, fall over. So, so I thought, I'll, I'll go behind him. So I'm standing behind him. And then I'm standing behind him, I thought, I'm helping. I've asked, and I'm helping. Oh, I am in for such a blessing, you know, because I, I'm asking if, if something terrible happened. I don't know. Do you ever, you ever preach him and you think something, you can't get out of your mind. I have to tell you what happened because you know, I shouldn't tell you this. But sometimes, I've seen people get prayed for. Some people just, they rock like that. And it's like they're keeping you guessing. Am I going to fall forward or am I going to fall back? Because now I, I, was, I was like that with this fellow. I didn't really know where he was going. And he fell forwards. I grabbed him, put him on the ground. The second person I prayed for, or he prayed for, he was an Anglican vicar. Now, as he, as he, as he, Fell for, he sort of fell forward. I grabbed his arm. As I grabbed his arm, I'm sorry, this isn't PC. As I grabbed his arm, I realised I've forgotten he's got an artificial arm. Oh. And I thought, I can imagine standing there. Oh, I went, Oof! and I dropped him on the ground. And, but he was all right. He was all right. He was all right. But now we're going to pray the third person. I'm thinking, I have asked, I've helped. And because I used to know accounting, I worked out with the numbers, I'm going to be last. <laughs> because if you're helping, you're last, aren't you? I thought, so I, I thought, I am in for such a huge blessing. I have asked, I've helped, and I'm last. The last should be first. You know, God keeps the last, best to last. <laughs> That's going to be great. So, anyway, they pray for everyone. And by now, it's only a little room. There's not enough room for the bodies. All the bodies are lying across the floors. <laughs> And you can't remember, and I've got that, just keep careful, careful like that, right? And sit so, so, let me try and get behind this one. And, and I'm trying to find spaces to put people. I'm laying them on top of chairs. But it came, it's my turn. And I said, right, Bob, here you go. Like, now you assume the position. <laughs> and he started praying for me. And as he's praying, I did this thought went through my mind. Why don't you pray for him? I don't think so. That, that can't be God. But if I pray for him, he'll fall on the floor and I'll be left like... <laughs> That's not God. I'm concentrate. And he stopped praying. He said, David, I keep thinking the Holy Spirit is saying you should pray for me. I went, that'd be nice. So I prayed for him. And down he went. I had to catch him myself. I had to both pray and catch put him down. I just avoided somebody else. He was a big man. He would have killed somebody. And so I put him on the floor. And I was just standing there. I think, excuse me. I mean, do you ever have conversations with God? Excuse me. I, 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 I've asked. I have been helping. And I'm last. And there's some people lying on the floor laughing and crying. And I can't get out because I thought, I'll just go home. But there's somebody lying across the door. 
and I couldn't, I couldn't open the door. They were open anyway, and I just, I just, I just they, they had windows, but they little thin windows. I thought, mm. no, no, <laughs> couldn't get my leg out of one of those. There, mind the rest of me. And it was at least twenty. I, was like, I don't know. If it it's like General Custer's last stand. There were just bodies everywhere, and I'm standing there. And they all got up one at a time, going, "Wow, that was amazing." I go, yeah, it looks, look great, it looks fantastic, it looks fantastic to me. And they go, oh, I've never felt such power. I thought, look fantastic, yeah, great, great. So I'm on my way in the car. I'm actually going to another prayer meeting, which I'm late for because I couldn't get out because there's somebody lying across the door <laughs> laughing and doing something ridiculous. I think this is absolutely terrible. So I'm driving along the road and I'm talking to the Lord. I, that's the way I, I talk to him and he talks to me. But when, when a Christian say, I heard God speak, it's not like voices in your head. It's like a witness of your spirit, isn't it? And I, I was talking to the Lord. I said, that was very interesting. I felt God say to you, I gave you something in that room. Have you ever had an argument with God? When he says something, you don't really agree with him. And you say, no, you're wrong there. Has anyone ever won one? No, I haven't. But this time I thought, I will win this one. The Lord said to me, I gave you something in that room. I said, no, you didn't. Because I have an identical twin brother. And thought, maybe, maybe God's got confused. <laughs> maybe he's blessed my twin brother up in Scotland. And he, he meant he blessed me. Because, I mean, it's not far for Scotland. Scotland didn't give me anything. The Lord said, yes, I did. I thought, I said, you didn't. I was there. I would, I would have noticed if you'd give me something. I got nothing. I got nothing. I was just standing there, got bad back, catching people. That's all I got. And then he said to me, I gave you hunger. And something went, oh, inside of me. And I realized that God had released a hunger that was deep within my spirit for more of his presence. And I've got to tell you, that's 25, 24 years ago, you know, 25 years ago. It's never left me. Hallelujah. It's never left me. I'm more hungry for him now than ever been. I believe, I believe it like well, always. I, th I hope I've got more of God in my life than I've ever had, but I still have a greater hunger and a capacity. That's the desert. That's the thirsty place. And it's almost like revival comes to thirsty people. And that's why I'm saying to you, I want you to feel hungry and thirsty for, for, for more of God because... This isn't normal. It says, it says how, how, how the wilderness will rejoice, the wasteland. See, it, it doesn't rain in deserts. I'm not, I'm not really in geography. I did sciences at school and sort of in maths and stuff. But I, I do know that if you're going to study rain, you don't go to the Sahara. You don't. You go to where I come from in Scotland. It rains all the time. In fact, we used to say the only difference between summer and winter was in summer, the rain's a bit warmer. It rains all the time. And what happens is the rain falls from the sky. We live in, uh, on the River Clyde at the hills, and the clouds come, and they, when they hit the hills, they drop all the water on our house. And it goes down the drain, into the River Clyde, out into the North Sea, and then something happens... And, and some of it's sucked up, some of it's evaporated, and the clouds, it comes back again the next day and drops on us again. I, I, I got the point where I'm sure I recognised some of the raindrops. <laughs> I thought, I've seen you before. I thought you were here last week. This is the same rain, it just keeps coming and coming. That's, that's where it goes. You don't, so so this, isn't, this isn't natural rain. This is something supernatural. This is something God's saying... I will pour, pour supernatural rain on those who are spiritually thirsty. And if you're thirsty, the qualification, you'll have thirst. The, the river of God will come because he, he, he wants to do that. And then suddenly, suddenly, there's fruit. And it's almost like flowers come up from nowhere. I don't know if you ever watched nature programs like David Attenborough and all those programs that I like watching those. And one, I was watching one, and, and he, I, don't know how they, I don't know how he knew to do this, but they put cameras out in the desert. And said, it rains here once every few years. And they left the cameras out, and it rained. So I don't know how long the cameras were there, but it just rained. And then there's that time delay thing, you know, when they make it go fast. So these shoots came up, green shoots came up, and these flowers, flowers came up. 
within hours, I've really bright, gaudy looking flowers. To be honest, I thought they looked plastic. I thought they've bought them in Tesco's or something. They're not real. They look so. But then these insects came from nowhere, and they were attracted to them, pollinated them, and then then they died because well, the seed was there waiting for the rain. And I tell you, in a lot of people, we've had so much of the word of God. If you don't have, if you don't have the, the word and the spirit, you just end up like living in a desert. But when the rain comes, suddenly there's the great harvest. That's why the Bible says, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. And you think, well, what happens? What happens there? It says here that uh, uh, the, uh, the desert rejoices. I don't know if you think, what does that look like? What does it look like to see a desert rejoice? What does a happy desert look like? What does a sad desert look like? I have no idea. But maybe the better question is, what would someone who hasn't felt joy in their life for years suddenly feels the presence of God, what would they look like? How would that change you? How would that... I remember I talking to a lady, and she got, we prayed for her, and she was so filled with the Holy Spirit, she laughed. She, went, she laughed in the spirit. She, never, she said, I've not laughed like that for 30 years. And I said, what happened 30 years ago? She said, I got married. But I don't think that was the reason. <laughs> <laughs> but the joy of the Lord is her strength. And it becomes just something which is, which, which is great. And it's, it's time for us to have, have the joy of the Lord and, and to, 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 to let it come to us. But I've seen times where we had a move of the Holy Spirit when the rain came so, so much that, that people couldn't walk. I said, I think God's doing something new, but it's not going to be like yesterday. And one of our problems is in church, whenever we think God's going to move, we think it'll be the same as it was before. But when it happened before, it wasn't the same as what happened before. So when God does something now, It'll be, what would a move of God look like in 2018 and 2019? And I believe that God is bringing souls into the kingdom of God. I believe this move of God has souls attached to it. I believe that it's almost like, like we had a real move of God from, from Toronto and another place all around the world where the church got really blessed. But much of it stayed inside the church. But this is the rain coming to the desert. And going out and changing the, the, the whole world. Something, something's going to change. Wait. Shall I tell you a story? You like stories? Let me tell you a story. In one of our meetings on a Sunday night, we used to meet on the main road in, in our college. And we're just praying for people. And, and, and I, and just the power of God would come on them. I didn't see this man come into the building. What had happened was it was summer, so all the windows were open, and it was just noisy. It wasn't the singing; it was noisy. It was there's people roaring with laughter, and there was just joy in the house. It was just power of God coming. And I thought, oh, what's that? Because it's a college. So he just walked in, see what it was. As he walked into the building, the power of God hit him, bang, and he fell on the floor. I didn't know who he was, but he was there for. I don't know how long, some 10 minutes maybe. And then he crawled on his hands and knees. There's somebody sitting in a chair. He crawled on his hands and knees and said to this lady, what is this? What is this? Because all he's done, he's just stuck his head around to see what's happening in the room. She says, it's church. Church. He went, what? And, and she said, you need to give your life to Jesus. But it's not usually the way we do things. She says, do I? I said, yes, you do. So she, so she led him to Jesus. I'm just glad that she was, you know, the right person. And then so he gave his life to Jesus. And then she said to him, um, now you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he said, what's that? She said, never mind, we'll tell you later. And that's not how we do it normally either. And so she prayed for him. And he fell over on the ground again and lay there speaking in tongues, which had, he said he'd never heard speaking in tongues ever in his life before. And he just lies there speaking in tongues. And I go up and at the end, just talking to everyone, and there's, there's this really man looking a little bit, wow, what is this? 
And, and he starts explaining to me, he says, you know, I just, I just walked in. And he said, does this happen to everyone who walks into your church? I said, oh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> all the time. Although we went six months where every unbeliever that walked into our building got saved. Every single one of them got saved. Six months, every Sunday, every, every unbeliever got saved. And Andy said to me, so, 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 so what is that? I said, I said you've, you've given your life to Jesus. And you've become a Christian now. And he said, that's great. And he said, and then he said this. I suddenly remembered. When I came in here, I was on the way home with KFC for my family's tea. And the back of church with a big bag of cold Kentucky fried chicken. They were supposed to, so we had to, we sent somebody to go up and buy him some fresh KFC to take to his family. Because we don't want the first act as a Christian being to bring home cold Kentucky fried chicken. I mean, that's not the thing to do. That's just the power of God. See, when, when, when the river comes, when the water comes, it changes the desert. It changes the life. And all, there's people here, you've got testimonies of how when, when, when the Holy Spirit fell on you, the river came and it changed absolutely everything again. And so I think, then the Bible says, what happens is, it tells us to strengthen the knees and, 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 and uh, make firm the feeble knees and strengthen the, the weak hands because I don't know about you, sometimes I feel really full of faith. Sometimes I'm really, I could take the whole world on. And this is the rest of the year. I'm not, I'm, maybe I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm talking to the right people here. Has anyone here ever had a problem in your life? Sometimes we hear Christians talk, it's almost like you're not allowed to have a problem. You know, you sort of think, no, no, once you become, when you become a Christian, you never have another problem. Oh, yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> you do. You don't get, you don't have to get the gas board phone up and say, I understand you have a home group in your house, so... We, you won't have to pay gas anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Or, or like, the phone companies don't say, I hear you use your phone for, you know, for contacting people, so we'll give you free phones, and you can have free, app. no, no, not an iPhone. <laughs> They'll probably give you an Android, because nobody wants them. They don't do it. You have to pay the same bills. In fact, I've got the same problems as my next-door neighbour has. In fact, sometimes I think I've had more problems than they've had. But so we, it's not like we have... We have less problems, we just have a greater resource. We have one we can run to in the time of trouble. They have nowhere else to go. We, we, we shelter in that. Because the Bible tells us that God has promised his joy and speakable and full of glory. Nowhere in the Bible does God promise to make you happy. Happiness is not a promise from God. Don't say, it's the joy of the Lord is your strength, not the happiness. Because happiness is different to joy. Let me tell you the difference. Happiness depends on what happens. Like, for example, this, I'm making this story up, so don't feel sad for me. But if I come in and say to Pastor Sam, Pastor, yeah, my, my, my great auntie just died, just heard, just heard my great aunt Cynthia's died. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I'm really sorry. Yeah, I'm sad. Or then I might say, actually, I didn't know I had a great aunt Cynthia until I got the phone call. And she's left me five million pounds. I'm absolutely delighted. <laughs> you see, the news, one bit of news makes you sad, but the other bit of news makes you happy. And if happiness tells you whether you're saved or not, then you're, you're saved every day you get good news, and you're not saved every time you get bad news. So happiness depends what happens. But the Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy, and at his right hand are blessings forevermore. Happiness depends on what happens. Joy depends on whose presence you choose to live your life. And if you live your life in his presence, give a joy which is bigger and stronger than happiness. It takes you through the valleys of the shadows. It takes you through the tribulations. Because it's, the joy is to do with his presence. He never leaves us or forsakes us. And that's, that's what he wants to bring to us. Now, I want to pray in a minute because I want to revive. I'm a revivalist. I believe God sent revival to the United Kingdom. I believe that as prophesied over me as a child, I would see revival in the United Kingdom. And it's going to have to hurry up. I'm getting old. I'm going to, and I believe we're going to see it. I believe we're going to see it. And it's because I'm still hungry. I talked to my mother on the telephone a couple of days ago. She's 91 now. She thinks that's young. And I, and I, 
I, I was just saying, Mom, I was just so desperate to see God move because uh, it's such a blessing to have Christian parents, isn't it? And she reminded me of when I was six years old. She said, I remember you and your brother, that twin brother. Now, you've got to remember, we're from Scotland, it was a bit different to England. Because when, when <clears throat> I think England, I think Scotland's more like Ghana and, than it is like England, to be quite, quite honest with you. <laughs> apart from the rain, apart from, apart, the weather's very different, thinking about it. But it's, apart, but, but it's a bit like, if you go to Scotland and they say, come around for a cup of tea, I mean, you go into the house for a cup of tea, they didn't bring a cup of tea, and then there comes this trolley full of food. And the sandwiches and cakes and everything that's that. That's what, I have sacrificed my body for the ministry. <laughs> this, that's, that's how this happened. I've, I've been willing to give my body. But it's all that, that food. When I came to England, somebody says, um, you want to get around for a cup of tea? And I said, said okay, and they, and they just gave me a cup of tea. And I thought, <laughs> is that it? Do you take sugar? No, I don't. A bit wet, this tea. Tea's a bit wet on its own. He needs like three or four cakes to go with him. <laughs> so, so on a Sunday night after church, we always went back to somebody's house. That's just the way it was. And it was our house that we, people came back to. My mum baked apple pies, cakes. We, we didn't have much money, but we, we fed everybody. And, and so when we were little, we used to love to help because we could hand the cakes out. I can remember my mother used to say, if, if somebody says to you, do you want one? The answer is no, you don't. They're for the visitors, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> and I can remember hanging them out and somebody said, do you want I said, yes, I could feel this. It's like, it's like Superman's got the eyes that go right through my back. I could feel the sheet of my mother's eyes go through my back. Like, yes, thank you. Thank you. I'm not looking behind. I'm not looking behind. Because it's, it's the only time you got it. Sometimes it was worth it just to have a pineapple square, whatever it was. That was amazing. And so my twin brother and I, we used to sort of, uh, we'd be sent to bed because it's school. And off he got to bed. And you don't want to go, why do you want to go to bed when there's, there's a house full of people, maybe 20 people in, in, in your living room squashed in, and there's a trolley full of food. <laughs> and so we used to come sneaking down, and what would happen, somebody would start going to the piano, and they'd start singing choruses, and they'd be worshipping Jesus, and then we'd start praying, praying revival, revival. And so we used to sneak down. And it's always my mother who came out. I don't know if she's better hearing than my father or just... I always go out, you're upstairs now. And then one night, I said to her, Mummy, we want to pray. Man, you want to pray? You want to pray? That's a good one. We want to pray. I think it must have been school holidays or something. She said, okay, you can come. But you sit that end and you sit that end. Because my twin brother very badly behaved. <laughs> I, I, I was, I was, the, I was a good twin. So I sat there, and I sat there, and then she says, "I remember when it came down. We said, but well, it's your turn. You've got to pray because we all pray. So if you come, you, if you say you want to pray, you'll have to pray.'" And you know, I was six years old. She said, "I remember you sitting there crying, tears. God send revival to Scotland." I didn't pray for England. I didn't know about England. Sorry, <laughs> I just prayed for Scotland. It's six. Is going to pray? And that desire to see God, it's, it's never gone away. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. And this, this, this isn't a natural hunger. This, is, this isn't a natural thirst. This is a supernatural hunger and thirst. And, and you know what? You've got it too. Amen. And we have to let this, because that's what brings the hunger. The hunger is what brings the presence. See, then it says that the eyes of the blind will will be opened the miracles happening blind people see deaf people hear the lame walk why because water shall burst forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert now if you're looking for the source of a river i guarantee you you won't end up in the desert you'll end up somewhere it's very leafy so this is normal this is not normal say to your neighbor that's not normal that's not normal, that's not normal. then now say to them don't worry you're not normal either I'm not normal. We are supernatural. Amen. We're not normal. We're supernatural. Amen. And this river comes from dry places. Now, try and follow me. This, this is so such an important revelation. Almost where would the river come from? It comes out of the desert. And this is what Jesus said. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. 
this supernatural river will, dry, will, will come out of the desert of thirsty people. The people who are thirsty will be able to release a river that changes the world. That's why we have to stay thirsty. That's why it's not enough just to say, well, I've, I've been once church this month or twice this year. It's time to say, Lord, I want to be hungry and thirsty for you. And I, I don't know about you, but I find I have to sometimes talk to myself. In Scotland, we've got, a, we've got a phrase, take yourself outside and slap yourself and come back in. Because sometimes you have to say, stop it, wake up, wake up. This is what you've lived your life for. Don't, don't stop now. Don't, don't, don't be faithful 30 years and then stop. Now's the time to push through. Now's the time to keep going. You don't stop just before the breakthrough. You have to keep going. And if it's not our generation, we've got to keep going for the next generation. We have to keep going. We have to keep pushing through. Let the hunger come. <clears throat> Let me read another verse to you over Isaiah chapter 55. This is a river of divine origin. It flows out of those who are thirsty for God. It changes the landscape. Isaiah 55 verse 1 says this. Ho! Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money. Is that anybody? You who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. I love this scripture. I often mention it because how can you buy without money? I don't know about you, but where I come from, buying without money, we have a name for that. It's called stealing. Just imagine tomorrow you just go to Aldi's or I suppose you shop at John Lewis, Waitrose. Max and Spencer food store. You just, you just go take your trolley, some of that, a couple of bottles, whatever you think Jesus says you can have. We'll have smoked salmon. We'll have a couple of joints of meat. We'll have this, that one, chocolate biscuits. We'll just fill up. And, and you go to the chair and the lady goes, oh, having a party? No, no. That's £325.44. pence. Thank you. And you just walk straight out. Just, just walk straight out. I guarantee you, you know, the little man with the uniform, he, he'll, he'll be there. You never see a move, but you'll see a move then. Excuse me. Said, no, so it's okay. Pastor said, I was, you understand, we were at church yesterday, and the pastor said, we can buy without money. I haven't got any money, so I'm just taking it. I'm going home. You're not going home. You're going to jail. Because <laughs> this isn't physical food. This is not normal. This is supernatural. The currency in the kingdom of God is not the euro. It's not the dollar. It's not the pound, it's hunger. If you're hungry, you can have this. If you're hungry, you can bring rain to the desert. If you're hungry, you can have a river flowing out of you that will change the nations of the world. You can go to every country of the world and just let the river flow out from within you. But you've got to be hungry first. You have to be thirsty. Don't let yourself be deceived in thinking, that's fine. I cannot live without seeing revival in my life. It's just I've crossed the line. It has to happen now. I want to see all of my family saved. I want to see all my children, grandchildren saved again. I want to see my brothers, my sisters, my aunties, my uncles. I want to see my neighbours saved. In fact, there's, there's nobody I don't want to get saved. But I want to see a revival in our nation. It's time to let the river overflow. It's time to let a river see. The river of God is not a canal that people cut and put where they wanted to go. The river of God goes wherever he wants. And actually, a river finds the path of least resistance. So if there's resistance, it just goes around, goes another way. And now to say, Lord, I just want you to take away all my resistance. I want to be a place where the river just flows into. And it says, out of you, out of your belly will flow a river of living water. Are you ready for that? Let's stand up. We're going to pray. We're going to sit with Father. I'd like you to just get ready to say, Lord, Lord, make me hungry for you. Ho, oh, everyone who's thirsty and you have no money, let's come by without water. 
I pray, let it come, Lord. Let the hunger come. Let me be hungry for you, thirsty for you. Let your presence come. Suka baba baba staf baba rabonda baba 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 nda rabista kara bonda rabana shike mama. Thank you, Father. I'm going to release the spirit of. Uh, I'm going to release the hunger that's within you. I'm going to ask that you smell His presence, so that you can you can hear, you can sense His presence that will make you thirsty for Him. Father, I pray that the fragrance of heaven fill this place. Let the fragrance of the Holy Spirit overflow this house. Let your power come. Father, release the hunger that the sinners we cry out. Everyone is thirsty. Those who have no money, we come, Lord. We know Simon Maggie's trying to buy us, but we can't. But we bring our hunger. It's not our dollars or pounds, it's our hunger you want. A desperation for you. Everyone will give up and say the man is starving. Everyone will come up, give up and say the man is hungry. Everyone will desist and say the woman is hungry for her children. Father, make us hungry for you. Let us be hungry for you. Release the hunger of the Holy Spirit now. Shakara ba 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 ra ba ra ba ra da ra ba saka ba 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 pura ba 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 ra ba ba kara ba 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 saka ba 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 ra ba na ra shakara ba 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 ra ba ba ra ba 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 ra ba 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 shikara ba 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 ra ba ra bunda ra ba 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 shikara ba 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 Jesus said out of your belly, out of your heart, out of your most being, will flow rivers of living water. Let the living waters flow. Let the living waters flow. Shakaba. Melusala Shakaba Rabadadai. Now in Jesus' name. Koraba Baba Sakabara. Karabara Bunda Rababa Baba Sakaba Barada. Kuraba Baba Shakaba. Shakaba. I pray for a release of the spirit of revival. I pray for a breakthrough. Breakthrough. The Lord says you're not going to break down, you're not going to have a breakdown, you're going to have a breakthrough. This is not the season of breaking down, this is a season of breaking through. And no weapon formed against you will ever prosper, but you will prosper against every principality and power that stands in your way. I pray, Lord, for a release of your anointing now. I pray for a release of your anointing. Fill your presence. Come on, Holy Spirit, more, Father. We pray an overflow of God. Enough to give away and still be full. Enough to give away. Out of your belly from rivers of living water. You'll never be empty again. It just keeps flowing from you. If you stay hungry, He'll keep filling you to overflowing. So you get enough to give away and still be full. Out of the abundance of your house. Let the abundance of your house come, Father. I pray for the abundance of finance. I pray for the abundance of health. I pray for the abundance of signs and wonders in the Holy Ghost. Filled in Jesus' name.
It shall burn away all the dross. It shall burn away all the dirt. My cleansing fire shall come. It shall cleanse you. It shall cleanse you. Mm -hmm. My cleansing fire will come and turn like a wheel. It will burn away all the dross, all the dirt, all the filth, and you shall be holy unto me. Even as I, the Lord, am holy, 
and you shall sanctify yourselves and be holy, for I am holy. I created a thunder. I created a fire. And I'm taking you, my children, on a new journey. You don't have to be afraid. I'm holding your hand. Hunger for me. Thirst for me. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, let your fire fall. Come, Holy Spirit. Put our hands together to the Lord. Let's put our hands together to Reverend Dave Campbell for his time. Thank you. So, please let's let's continue to hunger for Jesus. Let's continue to hunger for Him at home, wherever you are at work. When you're shopping, just just hunger for him. <laughs>